game worlds are often undervalued. Flashier aspects like the gameplay or story will take center stage, while the environment it's all set in blurs together, where you remember the broad strokes but can't recall the incidentals. I'm here to give definition to those hazy memories, and shine a spotlight on some details you might not have noticed. Welcome to Video Game World Tours, and this is Final Fantasy XIV. There is no better place to start than the region of Lenosha, specifically the city of Limsa Lomensa. This is one of the three starting cities of the game. I don't really have the numbers to back this up, but it feels like the most popular. A lot of the players will congregate around the large Aetherite Crystal, which is where you're placed when you teleport in. You get a view into every slice of the Final Fantasy XIV player base here. You have the dudes wearing really edgy outfits as they stare off into the distance. There's the people wearing goofy or gimmicky costumes. E-boys and e-girls hang out with each other. Cosplayers are everywhere. And of course, uh, this. It wouldn't be Limsa without this. As you might have noticed, Limsa Lominsa is a port city built over top the sea it so heavily relies on. There's a ton of boats and a lot of people handling seemingly important business. The geography here is so interesting. Look at the building here built on top of this tiny rock. The structure was seemingly carved out of the rock itself based on the blending of where the two styles meet. They built with the landscape around them in this city, rather than terraforming it to perfectly meet their needs. Look at these windows poking right out of the rock. If it weren't for those, you wouldn't even know people could be inside of them. You can't go in there, but I can't help but wonder what the internal layout of this building is. How much of it is hollowed out? And what goes on inside those rooms? Questions I'll obviously never have answered, but they're fun to ponder nonetheless. Heading outside of Limsa Lomensa, we can visit the Greater Lenosha region. These areas are great. I love how wide open everything is. I love the shallow ponds sprinkled throughout. I love the small military forts. It's a very fantastical landscape. The scale is impressive. A lot of MMOs are that way. They make the world space big to accommodate a bunch of different activities. And when you pull the camera back as far as you can, it really puts into perspective how small you are. Compared to Fallout 3, the game I covered a couple videos ago, it feels like the level designers really let the landscape breathe. They weren't afraid to have a wide open space with nothing in it. Fallout 3, and a lot of single player RPGs like it, feel like they're afraid of empty space. There's buildings, cliff sides, rocks, just stuff everywhere. But here, in Middle Lenosha, it's very open. I don't think that's specifically a characteristic of Final Fantasy XIV, but rather most MMOs. I'll definitely cover more someday, so get subscribed to see those. I'm specifically thinking of World of Warcraft's landscapes. I'd love to take a look at them in the future. Something we'll see in all regions are these military outposts. Each city-state has a military, and they have little forts placed throughout their own region. In Lenosha, they take the form of barracks built out of stone. A lot of them look very weathered. The stone's definition is fading away, tiles are chipped, and stains drip from the ledge of the upper level. All outposts in this region have a similar vibe. Some of them you can even go inside. I really love the interiors here. There's something off about them. They don't quite feel like real spaces. The ceiling looks just a tad too high, and there's way too much empty space. If this were an actual restaurant, there'd be way more tables. And look at how the people are acting. You have this Rugadin standing up, talking to this Lalafell who's just sitting up with his legs on the chair. These two are talking away from the tables, and this guy is just staring at the entrance. It's all very bizarre. This place looks like a restaurant, but nobody is sitting down and eating. Here's another building. Notice how similar the aesthetics are. Nearly all military outposts in this region use the same furniture and walls and floors. 
These aren't places you'll come to often during the story. You'll occasionally be sent to one for a quest or two, but you're in and out lickety-split. You aren't meant to spend a lot of time here. You aren't supposed to notice how empty it is, or that there's only two beds, or how wide those beds are. This room is why I made this series. It's a spot you'll come to once or twice and immediately forget about. Knowing that was how the location was going to be utilized, the developers didn't spend a bunch of resources making it look amazing. They just put in the bare minimum to make this room look acceptable. There's nothing flashy about the room, just some beds, some food, and a table. That's all it needs. Heading east brings us to the arid region of Thanalan, home to city-state Uldah. Compared to the loosely connected buildings that make up Limsa Lomensa, Uldah feels a lot more settled down. There's a ton of wide and tall buildings that flank both sides of the main street. It's all very urban. That's not something a lot of locations in the base game can say. After all, this is the most populated city. It feels very upper class compared to the working class vibe of Limsa Lomensa. Uldah's motto for coin and country embodies that. The trades you can learn here feed into it as well. Goldsmith and Weaver, these are services a wealthy person would need. Uldah is where the rich congregate. With all that money flowing through it, it's obvious the city would be very well kept. No trash lying around, no abandoned buildings. The marble floor here is very well polished. Like, I would feel bad walking on this floor with dirty shoes. Someone worked really hard to get this floor looking nice. There's some interiors towards the center of the city. I haven't been in here as much, so this whole area is kind of confusing to me. These hallways all look very samey. I shouldn't talk about confusing after praising Limsa earlier, though. That place was a nightmare to run around as a new player. I did find this little fellow guarding some steps. I jumped past him, ran up the steps, and was greeted with nothing. It's interesting, this little spot. Beyond where he's standing, there's nothing of importance. You're walking down this path to go to your job trainer. You look left, and you see these steps going up. You have no reason to go up there, so you just go about your business. There could have been just a plain old wall right here. The effect it has on you is subtle. It gives the illusion of depth. It's like the game saying, you can't go in this door, but can you pretend there's an actual room behind this? That's really important in world design. The developers who crafted this city couldn't create interiors for every single one of these buildings, and still have enough resources for the rest of the game. So they just ask you to turn a blind eye to the fact you can't go in every single door of every single building. You know, suspension of disbelief and all that. Uldah well, does a pretty good job at writing the line of letting you go in a lot of buildings, but not too many as to be distracting or take away development time from other places. Thanalan is a very dry region. The tall red mountains in the distance really do a lot to give you perspective for your place in the world. Just as I talked about the scale of Lenosha, you really feel like an ant walking through here. Something I was surprised about when it came time to research this area, I forgot how much greenery was around. I was tempted to call it a desert in my early video notes, but there's a lot of flora around here. Some sections of Thanalan don't have as much, but there's still more than I thought. The main quest did bring me here a lot, but I was on quest business back then. I hopped on my chocobo and rode directly to my quest marker without even looking at the environment around me. Before I started working on this video, I would have immediately described Thanalan as a desert. But it's not. There's a ton of grass and trees. And some of the subregions even have the same chance of rain as some in Lenosha. There's more depth to Thanalan than just desert but it still is a hot place. You can see that in how the characters dress. You're more likely to see some dude with his shirt off here than one of the other regions. You can see it in the settlements. 
Camp Drybone was built inside a crater that gives shelter from the harsh sunlight. Comparing the interiors of buildings in Camp Drybone to the interior we looked at in Lenosha, it's like night and day. Look at how much stuff is in here. This feels like it could be an actual shop with these items displayed on the table. I like getting real close to models I'm not supposed to. The developers don't want you to get up close to these boxes and see how low res the textures are. In this note, I feel like I need glasses. Look at how fake around these pots are. You can clearly see the subdivisions. Look at this model. This tiny little pot. Think about how little time it took someone to make. I don't know anything about 3D modeling, but I could probably watch a Blender tutorial and put this together within an hour. Don't get it twisted, I'm not dunking on their work here. I just want to give perspective. You get real close to this model and it looks awful. But you take a step back and it kind of looks alright. You step further back and it blends in with all the other miscellaneous items placed around. Every one of these had to be designed by someone. This little pot likely didn't take a while to put together, but look at the dresser it sits on. Look at this rug, this potted plant. Think of how many little tiny items have been developed for this game that people have never noticed. Has anyone in the history of this game ever stopped to look at this pot? Someone probably has, but I can bet you nobody has talked about it on YouTube. That's what I like about MMOs. You can appreciate the tiny little objects, as well as the massive landscapes. Everything has to be accounted for when playing a game like this. Gridania is my favorite of the starting cities. Located in the Black Shroud region, it's an area defined by its nature aesthetic. Mossy rocks serve as the walls here. Massive trees peek out from behind them. All kinds of vegetation decorate the sides of the understated stone path. I love the vibes here. Ugh, there's just so many great spots in Gridania. The Botanist Guild is a great open space in the mostly compact city. I like watching the guild members tend to the flowers. Apkalu Falls is one place that's beauty was not lost on me during my playthrough. There's something charming about this shallow cave and short waterfall located in the very back of Old Gridania. Fortunately, I came here a lot for my summoner job quests. But if you weren't a summoner and weren't forced to come back here, you might never even see this place. And I can't talk about Gridania without mentioning the Conjurer's Guild. When you first approach it, you're greeted with these beautiful pink-leaved trees. It immediately stands out from every other guild in Gridania, right off the bat. But the ride's not over yet. You walk into the tree here. You're guided down this winding, dimly lit path. As you go deeper, you turn this corner and reach a doorway raised above a small pond. Pass through the doors, and you find yourself in this massive underground cavern. Tree roots wind down from the ceiling, drawing attention to these little meditation spots. Straight ahead, after you walk through the doorway, are these bizarre glowing plants. I haven't done the Conjurer quest line, so maybe they're given a name at some point. I don't know. I just think they're pretty. I've talked about the interior design of buildings in the last two regions, so I might as well go over them here as well. Buildings in Gridania are very cozy. The dark wood paneling of the floor and walls make buildings like this easy on the eyes. The Roost is an inn located right in the middle of New Gridania. This building stands out because of its beautiful stained glass. So well designed and intricate just for a simple little inn. I imagine it'd be pretty nice to come back after a long day of work and hang out in the tavern as the sun goes down. Before we get to the most important spot of the video, let's cover the larger Black Shroud region. Most of it is a densely packed forest. Leaves often obscure the sky, little critters roam about, and you get to see the scale of the previously discussed massive trees up close. 
This is that MMO scale coming back into play. He feels so small when standing right beside these towering pillars. Some of Gridania's military outposts take place on top of these large trees' stumps. I guess that kind of raises the question, how did these trees fall in the first place? Did they cut it? Technology is kind of advanced in this world, but I don't know if it's this advanced. Maybe they use magic. The outdoor camps around here are so welcoming. Just as I talked about in Lenosha, this would be a perfect place to camp out under the stars. As I was looking around for interesting spots to cover in this video, I noticed this situation back in Gridania. Some children training on some balancing logs. They're trying their best to really balance here, but they'll never fall down. I know it's a weird thing to say about NPCs that are programmed to play a certain animation indefinitely, but it gives the whole world this bizarre feeling. Like I came by here for a couple minutes to gather footage of these people and left. But after I left, these three are going to continue to exist, doing these animations in perpetuity. This guy is always going to be trying to lift this box. This little feller is always going to be staring out at the sea. The seams of the illusion start to wear away once you pay attention to stuff like that. It becomes obvious that this world isn't actually a world, but a ride at a theme park where you're intended to observe from a distance and move along at a regular pace. If you were to jump out of the ride and stare at an animatronic for five minutes, you'd see it as the machine it is. But, as is the point with the series, it's fun to see games that way. It's charming to see the game not as a whole, but by each individual part that makes up the whole. If I'm being real, the game would be no different if these NPCs weren't here. The only time you're forced to engage with any of these three people is this guy for one step of one quest. That quest could have easily been rewritten to take you to another NPC that's being used for other quests, and these three could have been cut. But that's kind of the whole point. No one thing being cut makes a big difference on the feel of the game as a whole. It's all of these practically purposeless NPCs as a whole that make Final Fantasy XIV feel like Final Fantasy XIV. It's the fact that the developers aren't afraid to make one NPC for one side quest that nobody's gonna play, or make a handful of NPCs that are literally involved with no side quests purely for set decoration, to make this world feel like a real one. If you want to see me give a tour of my favorite Final Fantasy game, check out this one I did on FF7. It was the first one I put together, but I really felt a lot of passion working on it and I hope that came across. Thanks for watching, and I hope you book another trip with the Video Game World Tours.